there was once a landowner, a wealthy man. And this landowner decided that he wanted to plant a vineyard. And this man took so much care of his vineyard. He went in and dug the ground. He took every single stone possible out of that ground, got the choicest of the vines, and planted them in because he cared for his vineyard. This man had plans. He had to go afar. He had to do other things. But before he went, he decided to take more care of his vineyard. He put a wall, tall wall, that surrounded his yard because he said, if animals were to come, whether they be small or big, I don't want them to mess with my vineyard. He also put a watchtower right in the middle so that people would come in and watch and see if thieves would come and try to destroy his crops. The man cared a lot, and he did all that he could do for his vineyard. And he left, and before he left, he asked farmers to come and take care of his vineyard, to plow the land, to take care with all their heart and soul and mind. And so they did. And this man went on his journey. Harvest time came, and the man sent servants, saying, go, I want you to go and see why, what is happening to my vineyard. I want you to tell me, and I want you to bring back my crops. And so the servants went. But when the farmers saw that the servants had come, they decided to flog them, and mock them, and stone them, beat them, and kill them. The landowner was confused because this was his yard and he had given it to them. And so he sent more servants. He said, let me see what they do to them and see if they will return my crops back to me. And again, these farmers took a hold of them and beat them and killed them. The landowner looked around. No servants to be found. Who would he send? next. The only one beside him was his son. The one he loved so much. And so he decided to send his only son. And when these farmers saw that the son had come, they said, this man holds all inheritance. Let us jump on him and let us beat him, and let us steal everything we can from this landowner, for he will never ever have an inheritance. And so they took him out of the walls, and they beat him, and they killed him. This parable of tenants is found in Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 46. Jesus gave this parable when the Pharisees were standing and they were mocking him and they were asking about his authority and where he had come from. You see, the landowner in the story is God, the creator. And the vineyard that we had talked about is Israel, the chosen Israel. The tenants and the farmers are the Pharisees, the leaders of Israel, and the servants. Who were these servants? Oh, they started from the beginning. We had Moses who built the tabernacle. God who came down with the clouds and the people disobeyed. You had the judges who came and begged the people to follow Christ and God and they would not listen. You had the prophets Isaiah who had said, though your sins are as scarlet, I will make you white as snow. Ezekiel who saw the temple with the filth and begged the people to clean up their act. Jeremiah, who would just look at his people and cry. You had Daniel, Jose, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Zechariah, who would say that you are like an apple in God's eyes, and I don't understand why you don't listen to him. Not one of these prophets escaped 
Israel's hands. They were all beaten up. They were all mocked. Some were killed. Who is the landowner today? The landowner is still God. He still runs his land. He still looks down and wonders what kind of crops are coming up. What is the vineyard? The vineyard today is the world. Everybody here is in the vineyard. And who are the farmers? The farmers, that is you and that is I. We run the vineyard. We plow the ground. We produce the fruit. And who is the servant? Steel, the fairest of them all, Jesus Christ. You see, the prophet Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. But Satan wanted to strip his glory, and he said, Bow down to me. Jesus doesn't bow to anyone. On one hand, you have demons who would fall prostrate before Jesus Christ and say, you are the Son of God. On the other hand, you would have Pharisees who would call him a pig and a glutton, saying, you spend your time with sinners. Who is the fairest of them all? On one side, you have the meek, a lady, a sinner, who would wash his feet with her hair. On the other side, you would have the jealous who would say, crucify that man. Or on one side, hell would dig his grave and slam his body, his cold body, into the earth. And on the other, God would raise him from the dead. Because the splendor of light can never, ever be damned. The author of love cannot be held down, and the one who gives life can never, ever die. The sermon, the mini sermon today, is not about what we are doing in the vineyard. I'm not going to ask us how we are producing, what we are doing, how much we are working, how much we are sweating for Jesus Christ. And for God, that's not what I want to talk about. In a short minute or two, the Lord wanted me to remind us all, including myself, what an honor we have to work in the vineyard. What an honor. A man who would die for you and me. We work in his vineyard. Oh, he was despised. He was rejected. He was taken as a lamb to his shearers. And like a little sheep that does not open his mouth, he just stayed and he took it. What an honor to work in his vineyard. Oh, you see, he left the streets of gold to walk on the dust of this earth so that he could come for you and me, his lost sheep. Oh, he disrobed his garments of life and put on the robes of death so that he could set the captives, you and me, free. He left the kingdom of heaven to come to a stinking filthy, nasty, stable, so that you and I would have a future everlasting. What an honor to serve in his vineyard.